And you know it's going to be very detailed when I keep notes. Because I don't usually keep notes very much, Kifus. I no. Like the shooting from the lip. Uh, that was one of Mike Lupica's thing. Yeah. Great sports writer, but too liberal for me. Oh, but, shitty, <laughs> shitty fucking yeah. commentator. But fucking knows his stuff, though. Yeah. Um, recently, I wrote an article posted on MuscleSportMag.com where it was kind of just like a what-if kind of scenario and who's the best team of all time. Most people say the 27 Yankees, also known as Murderer's Row, is the greatest sports team, baseball too, but I mean, they, they even say that could be the best team of all time, even better than the undefeated Dolphins, right? But at least for baseball purposes, most people do say that. But the 1929 Philadelphia Athletics, and you youngsters out there are probably saying, he made a mistake, they're not from Phil... Yes, they were from Philadelphia, one of the original American League teams, yes. right? Um, Connie Mack, I mean, fucking 50 years, managed the team. Then we know what happened after that. They moved to KC, moved to Oakland, blah, blah, blah. But In KC, they became the Yankees farm team, essentially, because yes. that's where... The Yankees would handpick players from. Yes, Roger Maris you know. being one of them. And if you read up on when the A's were being sold, now at the time Connie Mack stepped back and his children were running the team, and there was uh, differences of opinion because he had two wives. So there was sons from one and uh, you know one son from one and two sons from the other. And apparently, a lot of rumors that the uh, Yankees ownership may have to get him to KC because shuttles. they had something going on in KC and they wanted this agreement with them yeah. and this and that. So, but that's, you know, that's there's no smoking gun, but the no. smoking guns on these teams now, so a lot of people think the 29 A's, both obviously won their respective World Series, but a lot of people would say, who's better, 27 Yankees, 29 A's. So that's what me and Keith has decided, let's look at the raw numbers of these teams, and who do we think is the best team of all time? Well, we're going to start off with the managers of both. We'll start with the 27 Yankees, Miller Huggins. Uh, I believe Miller Huggins was probably... I, I, I don't know if you give it to Stengel. I don't know if you give it to Tory. There's an argument that Miller Huggins is the best Yankee manager ever. Well, he's managed many a champion. Yeah, he managed many a championships. He held it together for through a lot of egos. Now, mind you, there there wasn't TMZ back then. There wasn't the internet. You know, no. Babe Ruth could you know eat a thousand hot dogs outside the stadium with the fans, drink a bunch of beers, and unless it was in one of the thirty newspapers the next day, no one knew about it except those people. Yeah. So the Brooklyn Eagle, the Brooklyn Eagle, or the <laughs> Long Island Press, yeah. or the uh, you know the New York uh, Amsterdam, the New Amsterdam News. <laughs> um, now Connie Mack was famous for his players hating him. Yes, he said, "I want them to hate me, so they play better together." So it worked in certain. It worked in certain circumstances. So. Who do I give the edge to? I'm going to give the edge to, just on that fact alone, Miller Huggins. Yeah, I'll go with you. On because that. Connie Mack, as, as successful as he was, who do you want to play for? I don't want to play for someone I hate. Yeah. You know, I, I just, I, I don't. I'm not going to, I, I I may win, but it's I'm not going to give, I'm, I, I'm not going to be emotionally invested as I'm going to play for someone who I love. And I think that's why the Yankees under Joe Torre did so well, because I think the players really oh, cared. Oh, players for him. manager, without a doubt. Without Joe a doubt, Torrey a players was. manager. And yeah. I think the same thing for Casey Stengel. I think he was like a mad scientist for them. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Billy Morton, I think, split the team. Some players liked him. Some players didn't like him. Yeah. Um, tough, tough guy to get along with. You know, I think it's better. I think it's better to be loved than be feared. Yeah, I, I'll go with you on that. I'll yeah. go with Miller Huggins. Uh, Yankees won 10 and 44, and the Oakland. Oh, let's see, I knew I was going to do that. Philadelphia is uh, 150. So, obviously, regular season wise, the Yankees, 10 more games. That's you know, a big difference. Yeah. Yankees scored up 975 runs. They allowed 599. 901, 615 for Philly. So, obviously, if you look at those numbers, you go right to the Yankees. And essentially, it's the same era. We're not talking about, you no, know, the 98 years. Yankees. No, and, uh, you know. this is the same era. There yeah. was, same you know, ball, same bats. Negro Leagues was still, you know, there yeah. was an integration wasn't uh, didn't happen yet. Um, so, let's just go down the fucking lineup for the Yankees. Do you want to go position by position? Is that how you want to do it? 69, missionary. Yes. Girl on top, my favorite. 69. When is she going to do that again? Um, so do you want to do that? Yeah, sure. All right. 
The Yankees had Pat Collins as their backstop. He hit two. I should have done the side to side. Mm -hmm. Two seventy five, seven home runs, thirty six RBI. So obviously, now a lot of people go, "Oh, those numbers suck." You got to think about the era. Back then, most catchers were more of just the fielders. Called the game. They weren't relied on to be thumpers in their lineup. Still to this day, for the most some, part, yeah, some, very rarely do you yeah. get a catcher. You don't get a catcher that, that's a 5-2 player. Right. Now, the Oakland... God damn it, the fuck, we're going to have a counter. Bing, I'm going to do a, a thing. Philly A's had Mickey Cochran. Now, this man ended up in the Hall of Fame. But if you look at his numbers from this season, the 1929 season I speak of, 331, you're like, wow, seven home runs, 95 RBI. So you say, wow, those are good numbers, but not great power numbers. But he was productive. Uh, you got to go Cochran on that one. Not only do you have to go Cochran, Mickey Cochran was Mickey Mantle's father's favorite baseball player, and that who Mick, that's who Mickey Mantle named, was named after. Great trivia. Mickey Man antidote, yeah, right? Mickey Cochran is was one of the original. Him and Cap Anson back in that day, uh, one of the Cap original hard hitting. Uh, and what I mean by like hard hitting, saying high average, decent home runs, high RBIs. Catchers, those were really like the only two. There wasn't that many decent hitting catchers back then, so it was yeah. Mickey Cochran and Cap Anson were the two. So you obviously got to give it to as much as Pat Collins. You know, I obviously never saw him play. I don't know much about him. He Speak wasn't... for yourself. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, you you one hundred percent give that to Mickey Cochran right there. That's a, that's an easy one. Now yeah. first base is a fucking. This is the best comparison if we're gonna go. Double X, Jimmy Fox, obviously a Hall of Famer. Now look at these fucking numbers. 354, 33, and 118. Now that's a fucking amazing season. And that's not even his best season. One year no, he hit 364 yeah, yeah. with 58 homers and about 135 RBIs. It's so. just ridiculous. But now let's look at first base. Tanglefoot, if you guys saw it prior to the Yankees. Lou Gehrig. Now this is just, it almost looks like a typo. It's so fucked up. Hall of Famer, of course. 373. Now, just that alone. 47 dingers and 173 RBI. And Amazing. If you, and if you look up his on-base percentage... Over 500. That he is had 135 walks, walks that Nuts. year. Nuts. Just ridiculous. I give it that to Garrick. You have to give it to Garrick. Even as though... Much as, as much as Jimmy Fox had just as good a career as Garrick, excellent player, excellent home run hitter, was, yeah. when I was growing up, in the top 10 of home run. Now I think he's, you know, he's over 500. I think he's dropped down now with all the newest players. Well, yeah. But getting into the 500, as he 600, is 700 home run club. You have to give that to, uh, to Garrick on that one. Uh, uh, it's it's you can make an argument either way, but I think Garrick at least if, if you look at the best two Hall of Famers. Yeah, so we're only going. We're not even going to go career wise here. We're mm -hmm. just going to go from that one season. But like you said, and maybe another year, Fox might be yeah. really close to that. But Garrick. So right now it's one in one. Mm -hmm. We should have had a pan handy. Yankees second baseman, one of Murderers Row, Hall of Famer Tony Lazeri. 309, 18 homers, 102 RBIs, plus stolen bases weren't huge back then. 22 stolen bases, second on the team of the New York Yankees. The original stud guinea in baseball. <laughs> he was. He was. He before was Lee, Lee Mazzilli. Mazzilli. <laughs> he, was, he, was, he was Lee Mazzilli before Lee Mazzilli. Did they he have a poster Zuno. day at fucking Yankee Stadium, though? What's that? Did they have a post today, Yankee Stadium? I don't I think, think so. not. Lee's got him beat on that. I think a lot of the wasps from Westchester that used to go to Yankee games just to throw cannolis at him. <laughs> Said, why does Tony not have oh. freckles? Because they slide off his face. Oh, shit. Oh, that's <laughs> true, though. Yeah. Um, it, it's a waste to even read. Yeah. Uh, and the Lazari's got this. Yeah. Max Bishop was the second base in the 29 Philly A's. 232, 3 and 36. Second base, again, at the time... <laughs> Used to be more, used to want, defensive position. yeah, old baseball strategy was be good defensively up the middle. Catcher, second and short, and center field. You, the, didn't, you didn't look for your big hitters in those The spots. Roger Hornsby's were rarities. Yes, definitely. So, obviously, I give that one to the Yankees, so there's two to one. 
Um, shortstop, Joe Bowley. That's an interesting fucking name. I think it's Bollet. Bollet? I don't know. Joey Bishop at second base. No. He hit 251. He only had two homes in 47. Again, like I said, back then, strong up the middle defensively. So obviously, they didn't. their run production was not up the middle. The New York Yankees had Mark Koenig. 285, 362. So really, it's kind of like, eh. I'll go with the Yankees. I got to go with Koenig. That crowd opened a great restaurant <laughs> in Floral Park called Koenig's right after his season. And I'll oh, tell you, shit. being, you know, part German myself, the uh, the, the Wiener Schnitzel there is just <laughs> out of control. So I think uh, Koenig, just for his uh, culinary skills post-baseball, <laughs> gets, gets the hit on that. I like the average. Yeah. 285 for a shortstop at, the, at that time was good. Um Third baseman Joe Dugan on the New York uh, former Highlanders, now the Yankees, two sixty nine, two and forty three. Blame Dugan. Paltry numbers for a third baseman, right, even yeah. in the twenties, yes. even in the twenties. But because they had these other bats around them, mm. you know, uh, Sammy Hale, not to be mistaken for the uh, replacement singer for David Lee Roth, Sammy Hagar in uh, Van Halen, or Nathan Hale. Nathan Hale, yes, was he like a? a Pilgrim or something? No, like a Revolutionary War guy? Revolutionary War guy, right? war guy yeah. <laughs> 277, 1 and 40. Now Don't this... shoot till you see the whites of their eyes. Right. <laughs> really, third base was not... There was a a not, no Mike Schmidt amongst them. No, no Mike Schmidt and no Brooks Robinson. Um, I'm going to give it to the A's only because the average is a little higher, and that's why I went the other. So now it's yeah. 3 to 2. 3 to 2. 3 to 2 in offense. Uh, outfield. Aloysius Simmons. Wow. Al Simmons, another big time Hall of Famer. 365. 34 long balls and 157 runs batted in. 157 runs batted in. Now that's. He basically, fucking... he carried, other than Jimmy Double X Fox, he carried the load of RBIs for that team. Yes. There was some other guys that had decent yeah. numbers. We're going to get to now, them. Al but Simmons, over 100. Though. Al Simmons' claim to fame was he always had less than 50 strikeouts every season he played. For a fucking power for hitter, a power that's hitter. Insane. insane. Today, today that would be an, oh. an, an anomaly. Fucking six weeks, guys. Strike yeah. out 50 times nowadays. Yeah. Um, outfielder on the Yankees, the first one listed, Bob Muser. Musual. No M no relation Musial. to Stan Musual. No, not that kind of Musual, yeah. yeah. Now, these are some fucking good numbers, too. 337, 8. 103, and he led the Yanks in stolen bases with 24. So those are some really nice numbers. He was a speed guy. Um, I believe he played, Earl Combs played center. Ruth played right, so Musial played left. Third, left hit. Which was a cavernous left field in the, the old, old Yankee, Yankee Stadium. was 61 to left center. Yeah, yeah. 457 to center. Um, Even in the, the remodeled, the 76 Yankee Stadium, left field was a, a big field, yeah. Until they brought it into 399. So, yeah. you know, not only was he a good fielder, he had to be to play the Yankees back then, but he was also, I believe it was Combs Musial was the one, too. I'm not sure. I think Combs led off and Musial batted second. So, obviously, they got on base a lot. Gets on they base. were good hitters. And uh, then you had uh, Gehrig. Ruth and Lazari after that to, to clean it up. Murder as well, hence yeah. the fucking name. So I'm going to go with Al Simmons, obviously, on this one. Yeah, absolutely. So Al Simmons is, 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 is the... Even though know. no slouch to him. No, no. So we're three up now, right? Three even, yeah. Three up. All right. Um, outfield, we'll stick with the... We'll, I'm doing it this way. Yeah. Now, this one, the greatest athlete, the greatest ball player... Of all time. Across every sport, across the globe... Change the game. Change the game. George Herman Babe Ruth, of course, was speaking of. Now, this is the famous season that Roger Maris broke the record, and then we know what happened after that in the steroid era. The Babe hit 356. Now, power hitters, that's why the Garrick number is just 373 to me is probably more impressive than a 60 homers, only because he had 47 homers also. But Babe, 356, 60, and 165. Now, that is a fucking... Monster, monster season. 60 home runs and 165. Okay? You got to think about the era In we're talking seasons, about. two seasons, <laughs> this now, that's 30 home runs and 85 RBIs. Imagine you did that as a Major League Baseball player today. You would make $20 million a year. Babe Ruth if you had 30 home runs and hit knocked in 85 to 90 runs, you're making $20 million a year. He did it in one season. It's, it's just... 
it's almost unthinkable. Like he hit more homers than some teams combined. Right. This is a, we're talking. This is after the dead ball era had come to a close. Babe really, a lot of people think the ball was changed. I think just Babe Ruth. You know, a lot of maybe they did tighten it up a little bit, but Babe Ruth killed the dead ball era by just being a fucking yep. monster. So um, I don't don't even bother. I don't care if it's oh, Barry I, Bonds. <laughs> yeah, but Bing Miller. Bing. Bing Miller, actually a very good player. 331, eight homers and 93 ribs, 24 stolen bases, led the Philly A's that year. Obviously, he was their leadoff hitter. Yeah, so obviously the Babe has that. So it's four to three. Yes. Oh, seven. Okay, eight, because then we have the pitcher hits. Okay. Mule Haas. Not to be mistaken with, uh, who was the other Haas? Moose Haas. Moose Haas. Now, it's, 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 it it's, a a take, it's a take on that also. Yeah. Now, Mule... He must have had a big cock, this guy. <laughs> this is a fucking... These are very impressive numbers. 313, 16 home runs, and 82 runs batted in. Those are great fucking numbers. But now you have Earl Combs, mentioned him before, 356, 6 and 64. Different kind of players, right? Because he set the table for the 3, 4, and 5. And if you look at uh, Moose Haas, Moose Haas' grandfather... Mule. 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 <laughs> he, it was, uh, it was, uh, Cochran batted second, Haas led off, Cochran batted second, Fox batted third, Simmons batted fourth. Mm -hmm. So they had a mini murderer's row. So yeah, he was, he was a good two hitter. Those, those numbers, those are like Tony Gwynn type numbers. For a two hitter is amazing. Yeah, Tony, he, he, he's got a, you know, there's, there's a lot of Tony Gwynn in that right there. I'm kind of torn because the average of Combs is so high. But the production numbers, I'm going to go with Mule. I'm going to go with him, too. So with, As a Yankee fan, I'm going to go so with him. So we're 4-4. Four, we're 4-4. Four, four. So when it comes to position players, the 27 Yankees and the 29 A's are fucking in a dead heat right now. Now, that could have won either way, obviously. So then the Yankees may have squeaked the 5-3 to three kind of thing. But... We're going to go to the fucking pitching staffs now. Now, which I found odd was... Looking on baseball-reference.com, Kiefer and myself love that site, Loves, and they're not paying for site. anything no. on this. If they want to, I'll be take their money, of course. Great site. The Yankees had five pitchers listed, and and uh, Philly had only four. Now, back then, it was a four-man rotation, so there may have been, I don't know, what maybe somebody dropped out or somebody got hurt or whatever, but we'll start with the, uh, the Yanks rotation. And we'll go right through. Right through. Wait Hoy. <clears throat> Big knuckleball. Their Acer. Their Acer. He was there, he's 22 and 7, 2.63 earned run average. Now, I noticed something very different. Back then, not a lot of strikeouts. No. It was not a lot of guys striking out. They pitched to contact. Yeah, so um, you're going to go 86 strikeouts, 54 b bases on balls. That's not big numbers, but that led the fucking team. So, and obviously, this is a, a world champion. So, 86 and 54, but 22 and 7 is just fucking ridiculous. Great numbers. Going to Philly, uh, a, a, a Hall of Fame, a lefty Grove, 20 and 6, 2.81. So they're in the, they're, they're pretty much dead even there, but now is where it comes to fucking play. 170 Ks, but 81 bases on balls. So this is a tough call. Lefty Grove or Wait Hoyt? I'm going to go Lefty Grove. I'm going to go Lefty Grove. It's a Hall too. of Famer. And with Lefty Grove was, you gotta, you know, you gotta assume we're talking about them playing a game, okay? Or a yeah. seven, seven. The majority of the Yankees were lefties, so you have lefty, lefty. Garrig. You babe. know, not that it mattered much so much in that time. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with Lefty Grove over uh, Wade Hoyt here. That he could definitely be a better opportunity to make the outs where they're needed. Right. Um, so, uh, we'll go with the Yankees first, like we were doing. Um, Herb Pennock, fucking not a lefty. Hall of Famer. Hall of Famer. 19 and 8, 3 even ERA, <clears throat> 51 strikeouts, 48 bases on balls. That's pretty much a wash. Mm -hmm. So Herb is was a big time pitcher for that that era, that team. Yeah. Rube Rube Waddell. Rube Waddell, 18 and 11, 3.60. Oh, real high numbers on the ERA, a lot of losses for a championship. Rue Waddell had a high whip because he always walked a lot of batters. Left-hander um, as well. He, uh, if you get a chance, if you're interested, Wikipedia Rube Waddell. He's one of the great characters of all time. I think he died young, 37, 38. Um, hmm. 
had a lot of, uh, they, they believed that he had a lot of, well, he did have a drinking problem. They thought he was also on some sort of drugs. I don't know what drugs you were taking back then. Drank a Coca-Cola. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you were, you know, you, you're smoking hash with the jazz musicians. Um, but um, Freeform jazz. I, Rube Waddell was, he had some really, really good, really good, Seasons where he had thirty something wins. That's but, that's where. The, but we're gonna just yeah, look at this season. Just this season. Ninety four strikeouts, ninety nine walks. That's a little more, high. That that is more walks than strikeouts. I'm gonna go with Herb. I'm going with Pennock as well. Too. Only because I, I you know, the the wins are close, but right. the the ERA and the walks, you know, and three more losses, but double digit losses. So yeah. I'm gonna go. So right now we have a one one. one. Uh, we said we're going to stick with the Yankees. Now, this is a great fucking name. This sounds like some kind of fucking like a, a miniseries on HBO. Two in the pink and one in the stick. <laughs> Urban Shocker. <laughs> this guy's parents fucking, they must have said, oh, this guy's going to be talked about for forever. He didn't have to even be a fucking pro baseball player. 18 and 6, 2.84. Paltry numbers in the Ks, 35 yeah. and 41 walks. So we're not really even going to worry about that. But 18 and 6, under 3 RA. Pretty good. Pretty good. George Earnshaw, 24 and 8, 3.29. He had 149 strikeouts, but 125 walks as well. So you want to see a, usually a 2 to 1 ratio yeah, on that, right? Usually, yeah. But 24 and 8. Versus uh, 18 and 6. That's Even though, tight, right. man. You know what? I, I got to give it to Earnshaw. I'll go with Georgie. Just because of the wins. I know they don't take much credit for the... They don't put much uh, stock in wins these days. Back then they did. They pitched nine pitched innings. the whole game. Yeah. So we got 2-1 to one Philly. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to go back to the New York Yankees. Dutch... Ruta? Um, Ruthven. I'm, Ruthven? I'm, I'm Dutch Ruthven. Dick Ruthven. <laughs> He's a left-hander. Yeah. I'm probably botching the name. 13 and 6... 3.38, 45 and 52 strikeouts to walks. So 13 and 6, 3.38. I mean, this is, th yeah. this is you know, their it's fourth decent starter. guy out of the pen. The back end of their Spot rotation. Starter. Yeah. Um, only a four man rotation for Philly. Jack Quinn, 18 and 9, 3.97, 41 and 39. Uh, I'm going to go with the Dutch. I'm going to go with the Dutch too. So with 2 2. 2 2. Wow. This is like. All right. Now. The Yankees, uh, this is going to be hard to do a comparison because the Yankees had five starters listed, even though they had a four-man rotation because everybody did back then. So, so they, we'll skip the uh, fifth You want to skip the fifth starter, go right? Go to, yeah. Now, they call him a closer, but he... He was the guy that, he was, a, he was essentially their one relief pitcher. Yeah. He could come in in the, in the ninth inning, he could come in in the third inning. Because most of the back then, they called a lot of relief pitchers mop-up men. Yes. But... Rolades Relief Fireman Awards. Yes, but if you when you look at these numbers that these guys who were listed as a closer back then, which there wasn't even a fucking right. a, a designation for, yeah. There was no, we didn't even look at saves. Um, we're going to just go wins and losses. So the New York Yankees, Wiley Moore. Willie. Willie? Is he Willie or Wiley? Willie do it. 19 and 7, 2.28. Now, for a fucking relief pitcher. It's a great number for a starter. Yeah, that means there was a lot of comeback wins. Yeah. Later than, wins. That's better than everybody except Hoyt as far as starting. It's like, why didn't this guy jump up in yeah. the... 75 strikeouts, 59 walks. The uh, Philly, Bill Shores, 11-6, and 3.60, 49 and 59. I gotta go Yanks. So that puts them over the top. The, the Yankees, Yankees are the better team. By one player. By the fucking relief pitcher. By the relief pitcher. <laughs> by one player. But... A lot of fun to look at these, you know, uh, you know, the old days of baseball. The the sport has the greatest history out of any of the sports. I don't even want to. There is no comparison. Fucking football, basketball, hockey. Nothing compares to baseball's history. Um, so it's interesting to look at old teams like this that played together. Now, I didn't go like, what would they... You know, the, when they played each other, right. I didn't no, even bother no, with no, that. No, no. I just wanted to look at the, because the lineups are so great and so much fun to look at. But to say the 27 Yankees are a slam dunk over the 29 A's is a fallacy. 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 And Incorrect. I, and next time we're going to we're gonna do the 80s. We're going to bring it back a little bit up to, to the 80s speed. And we're gonna I'm going to give you three teams, and we'll decide which two we do. I'm going to go with the 84 Tigers, who ran away with baseball. Oh, man, they started that 84. season, what, 18-0, I think? Yeah, 
I think we're going to go with the 86 Mets, obviously. Your probably favorite team of all time. And then, just for S's and G's, I'm going to throw in the 89 Oakland A's, who ran rampant all the way wow. through the, uh, Swept the series. San Francisco the Giants causing series. an earthquake. Yes. You, you, you know, Big Red Machine, you don't want to go anywhere with that? Well, we're going to start with the 80s the next okay. time. Okay, we can and then, and then next time we do, maybe we could, we could do the 70s, we could do yeah, the 30s. Yeah, oh, I, I, I would love the, to do that, because I, I know the, those the 80s Brooklyn teams. The Brooklyn Cardinals, we could the, do whatever you want to do. <laughs> but... Um, just for comparison's sakes, the 27 Yankees eke out a W against the 29 Philadelphia Athletics. And with that, for Kefis, I am Joe Pietaro. We'll see you on the next episode of A Shitload of Sports. Make sure, go to the store page, go to the subscribe page, and free shipping. Can't beat it, guys.